Okay, so I'm going to start with a question for you all. And what I want you to do is I want you to answer verbally. So I mean shouting, whooping, cheering, or deathly silence, if that's actually the case. So the question is, who here likes classical music? <laughs> Quite a good response, actually. So the media, journalists for years have been telling us that classical music is dead, it's dying, that record sales have plummeted, audience numbers have dropped. But actually, as you've just shown me, classical music is quite alive. It's in quite a healthy situation. Um, groups like Listen Pony and Non-Classical in London have been putting on interesting events in places like nightclubs and pubs to try and bring classical music to a new, a younger, and more diverse audience, um, which includes one of you. And clearly, it's working. Clearly, classical music is developing, and people are finding new ways to interact with it. There's one genre that still is having trouble, and that genre is opera. Let's try the question again. Who here likes opera? <laughs> Not so good, is it? It's now cheaper for an under 30 year old to go to the opera than it is to go to a football match. But yet, people just don't. Opera numbers have been dwindling, and it's a bit of a problem, really. So, back in 2014, Opera Houses United, they came together to try and work out why this might be. And they thought, if it's not financial, maybe it's geographical reasons. So to combat this, they decided to show operas in cinemas around the country with a view of getting new audiences to come who may not have otherwise been able to. All very well and good. But actually, research taken at the Guildhall School of Drama shows that, in fact, 85% of the audiences who went probably wouldn't go again. And the remaining 15% were actually the same <laughs> audience who would have gone anyway. So there's a problem. There's a, a problem in developing new and more diverse audiences for opera. So the question is, why? Why might this be? Now, clearly, there are very many reasons, and it's a complicated subject. But for me, there's one thing which stands out about opera performance that's different from the normal sort of music we listen to on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is the warbling. The, the wobble in the sound, the vibrato to give it its technical name. When you go to the opera, you hear singers sing with this sort of strange quality that you don't get in normal music. It sounds a bit like this. wonderfully empowering standing here with that behind me. I love it. So the question is, why is that so different from the normal music we hear? If we listen to pop music, folk music, any other style of music? It's a really interesting question. It's actually quite a natural way of producing a voice. It sounds kind of strange, but actually it's developed to try and help singers to fill a big opera house, and it helps the voice transfer with more ease. But it is quite odd. And the thing is, it's not inherent to opera. It's not a key aspect of opera. So much so that back in the uh, 1800s, critics like George Bernard Shaw said that that sort of warbling sounds a bit like bleating goats. So it's not entirely natural to opera. There's opera that can happen without it. And that's what interests me. If you take away that warble, what are you left with? What about opera is still there? Now, for me, that track is a very good example of the epic, dramatic quality of opera. Opera is really just sung storytelling. It's something where everything is sung rather than spoken. So in this case, the, the real magic of that track is the, the build-up, the excitement, the drama, the passion, the emotion. And those are all things, I think, that could transfer to other genres or to other styles of music. In my own work, I'm a songwriter. I often work with um, with dance music bands particularly, to try and bring some of that, that drama and energy and emotion from the classical style to dance music. Here's an example of one of my tracks. Bones to bones, they can bring their guns. I'm at war with the world. There is nowhere to run or mm, chest to chest. You can run if you want. I've come too far. Oh, I'm not going to lose. I feel so alive. Mm, oh, I feel so alive. Oh, I feel so
Now, clearly, that's very different from the opera example I played you just before. But actually, it's not that dissimilar. The voice has the same sort of rise, the same sort of euphoric nature. The voice is telling a story. There's an emotional quality to it. And actually, technically, it's quite similar. So whilst this might not necessarily be the future of opera, I think it definitely makes us think, what is opera and how can it be developed? How can the opera makers of the future redefine the genre, see what is the most crucial thing about it and develop it for new, diverse, and possibly younger audiences? So one last question. Do you think you could like opera? Yeah. Thank you so much.